Mega Mechatronics. All right, welcome back to the Mega Mechatronics Boot Camp Series for Mechanical Engineering, recovering topics in materials. And we are going to be talking about corrosion in this video. Corrosion is the chemical process that gradually breaks down the materials where electrons are exchanged and new molecules are formed. And there are a lot of different classifications of corrosion, uh, including things like erosion and wear. We're going to focus on these chemical processes. Uh, I feel those are the most important that we need to start with. So here's an old 1911 from World War II. It was probably buried under the ground. And here's some aluminum that has oxidized and uh, rusted, you could say. And here's some copper currency with that telltale green uh, copper ions sitting on the top there. So the corrosion process that we're going to be looking at is similar to batteries, and that's uh, actually uh, what batteries are exploiting. So we have uh, an anode metal and a cathode metal, and those are separated by an electrolyte. And there is an electrode potential between those two different metals. And when we close that circuit, um, we start equalizing the electrons because the anode has uh, too many negative electrons and the cathode has uh, doesn't have enough of those or has too many positive electrons so we close the circuit it equalizes, starts equalizing those and pulling those electrons from the anode and we harness that uh, potential so the elect the potential energy is the voltage and then the volume of the electrons flowing would be the amperage. So an example of an oxidation process with iron is where the oxygen in the atmosphere, the air, will re react with uh, the water, so like humidity and things like that. So there's water in the, the air as well. They, those two things react with the iron and produce iron oxide. So you can see how that degrades that base metal and turns it into that uh, brown rust that we are used to seeing. And that also happens with other materials such as copper. But copper does quite a nice, it creates this green patina. Um, and that's actually a protective layer. And that's why the Statue of Liberty is still standing. So now we're going to look at the nobility of metals in galvanic corrosion, which is a subset of corrosion. This is where metals have different electro potentials. So this chart here is showing the difference in electro potential. So at the top you see those numbers negative 1.6 to uh, 0.2 and magnesium, zinc at the very top. And we have some mild steel here, cast iron, copper, stainless steel moving down, and uh, gold is near the bottom there. So the difference between the electropotentials, we call that dissimilarity of the metals. And something to point out here, which is very relevant, is that copper and the, the lead tin solder. And that's why we use that type of solder with tin in it with the copper, because they're so similar, we're not really going to, we're not going to get that um, galvanic corrosion because their electropotentials are nearly the same so they're not going to eat each other up. On the other hand, we have aluminum alloys really, really, really high up there. And if you combine the aluminum with, let's say, a stainless steel near the bottom, you're going to have trouble where that aluminum is going to start degrading. So, uh, and same with uh, copper. When you connect aluminum to copper, you need to use some you need to seal it off, use some zinc paste. So you see that zinc is less noble and the zinc will actually sacrifice itself. So to sort of illustrate the process in a fun twisted way, uh, we'll go back to the medieval times. So let's say this guy on the chopping block is uh, a low nobility metal and we have our king over here with high, no he's a high nobility metal 
and these are there is a dissimilarity between them so our axe man is the electrochemical process and uh, the higher nobility uh, starts taking those ions from that lower nobility metal, starts creating different molecules, and starts degrading that lower nobility metal. So preventing corrosion, this is very important. So the non-galvanic corrosions, that oxidation process, we want to create a barrier uh, between the atmosphere and that water and, and all those chemicals in the air uh, by using paint coatings, uh, powder coating, things like that, um, galvanization, uh, just co coat, or, or oil, so your steel stock, if you don't want that stuff to rush, just put a coat of oil on it. And there is this natural passivation, and this is uh, why aluminum is, is great material, because you see it creates a very dense ox aluminum oxide layer that acts like a coating and prevents moisture and oxygen from attacking it. That's why it's used a lot in uh, water, building docks and things like that. And you can actually induce passiv uh, passivation. And this is showing an anodization process on aluminum. And you can see how they grew these columns in there using uh, a, a, a process in an electrolyte with electricity and they actually grow down into that material and create this this very porous layer uh, that they fill with coloring and things like that. That's why uh, Apple uses that on their products because it's such a durable uh, color coating. And looking at galvanic corrosion, you need to electrically isolate the materials that are dissimilar. So you want to break that circuit, you want to open up that circuit so it, it can't allow that, that process to, to take place. Um, or we can actually take advantage of that, uh, those electropotential differences and, and connect a sacrificial anode, something with low nobility that we don't care about if it erodes, but that will actually protect the base material. So here's an example of uh, a zinc anode that you would install on uh, an outboard engine and here is a galvan a hot galvanizing process where they're they're making uh, basketball goal posts that for for schools or something that are going to be out in the weather uh, so that uh, zinc coating will erode over time and protect that base metal and even polymers don't really corrode they degrade um, you could call it corrosion that's fine uh, and it's caused by UVs, radiation, uh, free radicals, oxidizers, ozonation, chlorination, and even heat uh, affecting. So polymers, we're talking about rubbers as well as plastics as well. And uh, it's a breakdown of the polymer chains is, is one way. So polymers are, are uh, just a bunch of these chains, and you start breaking those down and as well as loss of additives, uh, the plasticizers um, within that polymer. Uh, you can see the plasticizers sort of hold apart those chains, uh, the, the polymer chains, and separate them. and gives it more flexibility uh, and it makes it less brittle. So here's, uh, this is why you want to keep your dashboard clean. You can actually uh, protect from protect your dashboard from that UV radiation and sort of uh, hold in those plasticizers uh, or else your dash is going to crack like this as well as um, like old trailer tires or old cars you see the rubber starts dry rotting they call it and cracking and that's caused by UV and heat and those things that we talked about well that was our corrosion video thank you for watching